So what I'd like to do is give you an overview of lighting and shadows inside of uh, Maya using shave and a haircut. All right, let's take a look at our scene here. We've got one simple light that we've got lighting up this scene. And something that I want you to be aware of is it's not a good idea to duplicate this light. So instead, we'll create a brand new light. And I'm going to use a spotlight. And I'll use a different type of light later on. This one is just since the light is shooting out from one direction, it's just going to make it a little bit easier to manage. Okay, so let's put this in like this. And we'll go up here and create one more light. Spotlight. Look through selected. We're going to put this around back like this. Okay. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and name these and set some appropriate values. So we'll go into the uh, spotlight here. And this one in the back is going to be the rim light. And I'll go in and we're just going to set this intensity down a little bit. And I'm not going to get into the whole lighting setup, but just to kind of give you an idea of what we want, we're going to do a third here, a 0.3. And I'll name this my uh, fill. Okay, and this will be my key light. Okay, and I'll just set this to something like 0.75. Okay, let's go ahead and take a quick render of this and see what we get. Now, by default, all the lights in the scene are going to add to the shadowing that we're going to see here on this character's head. So let's see what we get. All right, so as you can see here, all of those lights have attributed to the shadowing on this surface. But here's where we start to get into a little trouble. Let me create a quick polygon plane here, and I'll just put it in the background. Okay, and let me just go to my top view here. I'll go ahead and rotate this to where it's straight up. And I'll go ahead and rotate it in an angle. What I'm trying to do is, let's see if I can get an uh, opportunity to look through my camera here. Oops. Okay, and I'm just going to move my light just a little bit here, as well as move this poly object just so it's facing me and it fills up my light and the reason for that is I want to capture that shadow okay so here's my setup here I want to re-render this just so you can see what happens from that light hitting this character and then hitting this plane okay so as you can see it looks like there's a toupee on the background and that's because all of the lights in here are affecting this hair system. It's also creating the shadow from the render, uh, the shave render buffer. So how can we deal with this? Well, we're going to need to create shadows on our lights. And that's no problem. We can just go over here, grab this one, come down to shadows, and we'll turn on use depth map shadows. Okay. And we'll re-render this. Okay, so now we actually have a little bit of lighting information. So what I'd like to do is tweak the settings on this. Okay, and I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit. Tweak the settings on my light. And by increasing this filter size, so let's increase it to something like 10, which is going to be quite a bit. Now, if I draw a little marquee right here, it's going to calculate the hair as well. And I don't want to do that. I just want to calculate, see if I can get it close to this softness. So the way we can do that is select this hair system. And we'll go into uh, the top up here where it says active. We'll turn that off. And now I can actually render out a little piece and it will very quickly render that. And it looks like 10 is going to work for us. So if I was to render this piece again, and let me just turn on auto render region here in my options. There we go. There we go. So it'll quickly give that back to me and give me the same kind of softness. Now, I'll go ahead and turn my hair back on since I know what I like. But here's the problem. Okay, I got my shadow here and I got everything set up. But if I create a brand new light, and you know, something like point light. Okay, and I'll pull this out like this and up. And let's say I make this 
kind of a reddish pink color just so it's a little bit easier to identify like that and we'll set the light down a little bit let's see what happens when I render this okay so here we've got now the red influence and I'll turn that down here in just a second but if you look right here we now have another shadow now that's not really useful so how can we use utilize this to light exactly the way we want well we're gonna do something called the light linking or, or shave linking uh, to this and we're gonna go up here to shave and it's under uh, edit current so how are we gonna set this up well first of all let's go to the shave globals and I'm going to turn off use all lights now this unlinks everything so now when I hit render it renders my image very quickly however I have no shadow information nor do I have any of that self shadowing information so I'll save this so we have something to compare it to okay so let's take a look at our scene here and say alright well we want to take all of these lights and now what we want to do is go in select uh, so I'm sorry select the hair here and we'll this time we'll shift select all the lights so it'll just be easier to make those selections and say okay we'll go up here to shave edit current and we're gonna go down to uh, oh I'm sorry uh, shadow attributes add to selected lights now what's gonna happen is over in our lights okay so for example let me pull this one over here just as a demonstration you'll see down here under shave shadows you now actually have a resolution and a fuzz so resolution of the shadow that it generates the map as well as the blurring factor well I can take this little light here go to its shave shadows and set my resolution to something really small like one and my fuzz to zero now this is gonna be a fairly expensive hit on rendering but you'll see that we will have the color information on the light on the hair as well as the shadow information of the previous light but we will not have any shadow information from this particular light okay so let me show you a quick render of this now if you take a look at the time we're looking at one minute 18 seconds so we did take a hit on rendering this was 12 seconds but as you can tell we've got a lot of nice shadowing we've got this and we lost that gray shadow that we had in the background so very similar to this but with the shelf shadowing in our scene so uh, just another way of approaching lights in your scene next we're going to talk about using this with mental ray